Hello everyone, welcome back to Wild Ginger Hand Weaving, where I make weaving tutorials and how-to videos. Check out my last pattern tutorial where I showed what happens when you rotate through three colors on a four shaft loom, and what you get is an automatic wave pattern coming through like this one. In today's video, I'm going to show you what happens when you add a fourth color into the mix, and something quite different ends up happening. I'm using L Lily Sugar and Cream yarn in four colors for my pattern. You can pick any four colors, although I recommend choosing some with a bit of contrast, which makes the pattern really pop. As always, you can find a link in the description below to warping directions for how to set up your loom for this mug rug project. And with that, let's get started. Today's pattern is tutu bound weave. The bound weave part of that means that my warp threads, the ones going vertically, are set rather wide apart, giving me lots of room to really pack down the colored weft threads on my shuttles, leaving no gaps, and that means the warp is only actually visible at the fringes. The 2-2 part of that means that I'm working on a four shaft loom, and when I press down one of my treadles, there will always be two shafts up and two shafts down at a time. Treadle one leaves shafts one and two down. Treadle two leaves shafts two and three down. Treadle three leaves shafts three and four down. And treadle four leaves shafts four and one down. These are the four different openings between the threads. Those openings are called sheds. And I will simply be treadling through one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, the entire time. There won't be any change from that in this entire pattern. That means to get the pattern effect I want, I will have to rely on where I put my colors for that to come through. I've stacked my shuttles here in order, so I'll be starting with this color up top. This is my lead color. All of these will be going through the same direction. So I'm gonna start on the right side, pass them all through right to left, and then on the left side, I will pass them all through left to right. So let's start with my lead color here, pressing down treadle one. Once I pass it through on the other end, it goes to the back of the line. I'll do that consistently for this whole project, which will make it a lot easier when it comes to the trick a little bit later on. Now I'll press down treadle two, send through my second color again from right to left, and it goes to the back of the line at the other side. Then pressing down treadle three, I will send my third color through again right to left and it sets down at the back of the line. And finally, my fourth color pressing treadle four from right to left and to the back of the line. At this point I have sent all four colors through and I've used all four treadles once. So I'm back to where I started with my colors and my treadles just going through from left to right this time. So pressing down treadle one I'll start again with my lead color and go through the same process again. Color two on treadle two. Color three on treadle three. And color four on treadle four. Now I'm back to where I started and all of my shuttles are on the right again. Let's do that once more. At this point, I've cycled through all four colors on all four sheds four times, and you can start to see in the pattern what's actually happening. Since I have four colors and four sheds to pass them through, they don't actually move from pass to pass. My blue color is always in the same spot on all of those passes, and same for the other three colors. Now, if I were to keep doing that for the entire length of a mug rug, 
what I would end up with is columns going the length of the mug rug and those colors wouldn't go anywhere. That could be neat to try sometime, but what I'm going for is a zigzag pattern. In order to get that, I need to move where my colors are and put them on a different shed, pressing down a different treadle next time I send it through. That means what I really have to do is reorder my colors, and it's actually quite easy to do that. I'm simply gonna take my lead color and send it to the back of the line. Now I have an entirely new order of colors here. Actually, they're in the same order, but with a different lead color starting them. So now green is gonna be my lead color on treadle one. Now white is my second color on treadle two. Again, I'm simply putting them at the back of the line once I pass them through. Now my dark blue is on treadle three. And what was my lead color is now my fourth color on treadle four. You can see that my colors have all shifted one space, which will get me that zigzag pattern I'm looking for. Let's do the same thing again. Lead color on one, Color two on treadle two. Color three on treadle three. And my new color four on treadle four. Since I used the first color sequence four times, I'm gonna do that again here. I'll repeat that with my new color order two more times. Okay, at this point, I've done my first color order four times and my second color order four times. I'm going to shift the colors around again to get a third order for my colors. And again, I'm gonna take what's now my lead color and place it at the back of the line, which gives me white as my new lead color, dark as my second, blue as my third, and green now as my fourth. I'll repeat this order four times through. At this point, I've repeated that third color sequence four times, and I'm ready to start on my fourth and final color sequence, which again, I get by moving my lead color to the back of the line, giving me a new color with dark blue as my lead color, blue as my second, green third, and white now fourth.
At this point, I've completed my fourth order of colors and repeated that four times, which means I've done that with all four of my color blocks here. At this point, I would be back to the original starting point of the pattern if I simply put my lead color to the back of the line. Now I would simply repeat what I've just done, those four different orders, four times each, and I'll keep doing that until I get the length of a mug rug, and I will get something that looks a bit like this. Now if we compare what I'm doing right now to what I did last time, you can see that it is more stretched out in today's version by quite a bit, actually. That just comes down to how hard I'm beating it. In this, I used a very firm, heavy beat and packed things down very densely. In today's, I'm using a lighter beat, so the pattern ends up looking a bit more stretched out. That is in part down to you, the weaver. In part, it's down to the loom that you're using, um, but that is something that you could change or you could also change how many times you repeat each color sequence. If I wanted to stretch out a pattern that was too squat, I could repeat it more than four times. If I wanted to make this squatter without having to beat harder, I could simply repeat it three or even just two times, and that would get a more condensed version of the pattern. That I'll leave up to you, but there is the pattern and how you do it. Happy weaving. Thank you for watching this tutorial on tutu bound weave in four colors. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan to try out this pattern or if there's anything else in particular you'd like to see in future videos. Like and subscribe to get more tutorials and patterns like this one, and I hope to see you in the next video.